Thank y'all for joining me today. Grab your Bibles and turn to Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6. We'll be looking at verse number 16. If you'll find your verse, your place at verse number 16, I'll read it for us. Verse 16 says, Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Let us pray. I pray, Lord, you just continue to, to help us today. Lord, help us with this lesson. Lord, for those that are uh, listening to it, I pray, Lord, that you just help them to apply it to their lives. Lord, uh, you are uh, training and helping me apply it to my life. Lord, we love you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, when you think about um, this verse, and it's talking about this shield of faith. So this is a piece of armor, not that you have attached to your body, but you are going to carry this. Um, and on your, they would be carrying this on your arm. Imagine, use your imagination. I put some uh, pictures up here for us to uh, help us with our imagination. But use your imagination and imagine yourself. And you've got every piece of your armor on. You are ready for battle. You are on the front line of battle. You've got on your helmet. You've got on your, your breastplate. You've got on your proper shoes. You've got all of the pieces are on. Um, and you, then you are on the front line of battle. You are in the midst of a heated battle. And where is your shield? Where is your shield? Is would you find it down by your feet? Um, would you find it that? Would you find out that you left it back um, at camp? Um, would you find yourself sitting on it and you're in the heat of battle? No, no. You are standing in the heat of battle, and you have your shield in front of you, and that shield is deflecting. It's deflecting those fiery darts. And if you look at the scripture again, it says, Taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench. This is saying that if you will take your shield of faith, you will be able to. You will be able to, what? Quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. So those that fire that's coming at, at you, that's fire that's being um, um forced upon you that's being shot at you those are will be quenched the fire will be put out the they will no longer have any effect on you because that shield of faith is blocking that um and the lord's saying if you will use your shield that's how you're going to be able to stand up against the wiles of the devil that's how you're going to remain um in fellowship and in in um, and in going in the right direction, going in, on the path that he has for you because you've got that shield of faith and you're deflecting all of those fiery darts. Now, I'm going to give you some examples. This is some personal examples. Um, when my, first, my husband was first called to preach, I was very um, happy for him. I was very excited for him that the Lord was choosing to use him in that way. Um, not long after um, that he got, he got called to preach in May, I got saved in July. Um, the I went with him when he would go. He would be asked to preach from time to time, and I would go with him, and I would help him, and I would by encouraging him and helping him at home whenever he was trying to study and trying to keep the kids quiet or um, you know finding some other fun things to do with them while he was trying to work and study and be prepared to preach. And he was so nervous and he was, um, you know, he was really trying to be, uh, make sure that he was getting things correct. And I was very supportive of that. Now, in the meantime, um, I had gotten saved, like I said, back in, in July after he was called to preach in May. The Lord immediately was opening some doors um, that he was getting to preach at some different places. And he started preaching up at Laurel Hill Baptist Church. And he, this, this started in November. Um, we had found out we were pregnant with our fourth child, and he started uh, preaching for them up in, in at Laurel Hill in November. And um, in the midst of all this, they kept calling him to come back, you know, kept calling him to come back. They started talking to him about being their pastor, and I was thinking, okay, now I was very supportive of him being a preacher, and I would, couldn't go with him to do that and, you know, try to keep the kids behaved when he's trying to study in the house and and I can, you know, do all that. But if he's going to be a pastor, then that would make me a pastor's wife. I wasn't all that excited about becoming a pastor's wife. I had a lot of doubts about how um, uh, that would affect me. I had a lot of fears about 
well, I don't even know what to do, you know, what to do. I don't know how to be a pastor's wife. So um, I had all the confidence in my husband to figure those things out, but I didn't have very much confidence in myself to be able to learn and to figure those things out. And so um, darts started flying, and I didn't have my shield up there for a little while, and the darts started flying. Um, the, that was reminding me of, of where I was from, and reminding me of, of who I used to be, and uh, those things used to be true, but they were no longer true. And so I would have to put up my shield and remind the enemy that I was no longer um, the, that person. I was no longer, um, I'm no longer the same. I've been redeemed. I've been changed. Um, I am a new creature in Christ. So um, those things I had to deflect. And um, it was harder for me to deflect those accusations of, you don't know what you're doing. Well, that is true. That is true. I did not know what I was doing. I did not know how to be a pastor's wife. And all those accusations kept coming over and over and over again. And they were statements that were true. What the statements, what the enemy likes to leave out is, but God. But God had a plan for me. But God had a plan for my husband. Because he had a plan for my husband, it automatically meant he had a plan for myself. And if he had called my he was calling my husband to pastor at this church, then that also meant that he was going to equip me to be a pastor's wife. Now, I didn't have any idea of what to do. I had no clue of what would be expected of me. Um, and I wanted to, um, I didn't want to go, but I went out of obedience to the Lord. So I had to deflect that shield of faith in spite, um, or that, use that shield of faith to deflect those fiery darts in spite of all of the reasons why that I wouldn't make a good pastor's wife, why that when my husband had just been called to preach, you know, six, seven months before that, that you would want my husband to be your pastor, that was just made no sense to me. But God was definitely moving in the situation, and we, we could see um, that he was supposed to be there. And in spite of all of that, all of these accusations of, well, you know, you're too young, you're not, you don't have any experience, you don't know what you're doing, you're uh, pregnant with your fourth child, you've only been saved for a few short months, you will not make a good pastor's wife, you don't know what you're doing. In spite of all of those things that were true, we went and I became a pastor's wife. And unbeknownst to me, it was going to be the most wonderful thing that had ever happened to me. What I had to do was put up my shield and say, Lord, this don't make any sense whatsoever, but I know you are calling him to do this. And if you're calling him to do this, then you're also instructing me to do this. And I'm going to go in obedience. I'm not going to pitch a fit and stay home. I'm not going to pitch a fit and just go to our home church and drive two separate cars. That would have been silly. Um, but I was going to be obedient and go and find out what God had in store for me. And it was more amazing than I could have imagined. Now, granted, I still didn't know what to do. I still had no clue what to do once I got up there. But God had the right people in my path. He had the perfect people. It was the perfect uh, congregation to help me and train me and guide me and encourage me to do things that I never in a million years would have thought I would have been able to do. I had never taught. I had never planned a Bible school. I had never been over and um, um, planned fellowship dinners. I had never uh, directed a Christmas play. Any of those things that I had never been involved in. I had participated as much as I could at my home church, uh, but I was never in charge of anything. I was never... I didn't have all that responsibility on me. And, I, and nor did I feel like I was even qualified to do any of those things. Um, but the Lord, um, he, he, he qualified me in the midst of it. He trained me in the midst of it. He used somebody who didn't have any abilities, and that's where he gets the most honor. Now, I want you to, for a biblical example, I want you to go to the book of Judges, and I want you to turn to Judges chapter 6. That's in your Old Testament, <coughs> the book of Judges chapter 6. Find your place in the book of Judges chapter 6. I may need to put on my glasses so I can find my place. <clears throat> Judges chapter 6. And I want you to look at verse number 11. Verse number 11. 
Verse number 11 says, And there came an angel, hold on a second, And there came an angel of the Lord, and sat under an oak tree, which was in Ophrah, and pertained unto Joash, the Abazarite, and his son Gideon, threshed wheat by the winepress to hide it from the Midianites. So here we've got an angel of the Lord, and the Lord is capitalized. Um, is the Lord himself had a message for Gideon. Gideon was the one threshing wheat by the wine press. He was hiding in the wine press, threshing his wheat, trying to keep the Midianites from stealing the harvest, from stealing the food that he was going to be using to help feed his family and probably many other families. So Gideon um, was doing some farm work in this hidden wine press, and God has a message for him. Now, I want you to jump down to verse number um, 14. Verse number 14 says, And the Lord looked upon him. This is talking about the Lord was looking at Gideon. He was watching Gideon and said, Go in this thy might, that, and thou shalt save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have not I sent thee? So he's got this message. He's been looking at Gideon. He's came to Gideon um, right where he was, right there in the wine press, threshing wheat, hiding from the Midianites. Um, and he comes to him with a message, and he wants him to go in his might, and he wants him to save Israel from the enemy. Now, let me, let's look at how Gideon responds. Gideon was in, in much a shock as I was to become a pastor's wife. I was in complete shock. Gideon, you're going to hear, is in complete shock, and this doesn't make any sense. Look at verse number 15. And he said unto him, so this is Gideon speaking to the Lord, and he said unto him, O my Lord, wherewith shall I save Israel? Behold, my family is poor in Manasseh, and I am the least in my father's house. He's saying, Lord, I am not. I don't have any might. I don't have any power. I don't have any strength. I don't have any training. I don't know what I'm, I'm, I wouldn't know what to do. I wouldn't know how in the world to save Israel. How am I going to be the one to save Israel from the, from the Midianites? How in the world am I going to be able to do this whenever I'm the one, I'm hiding out here, down here threshing wheat. Uh, he is just in complete and utter shock. He cannot believe what the Lord um, is wanting him to do. This is the Lord's response into that. Verse number 16 says, And the Lord said unto him, Surely, I will be with thee. And I want to say from personal experience, the Lord was with me when um, the Lord chose for me to be a pastor's wife uh, 20 years ago at Laurel Hill Baptist Church. The Lord, again, when the Lord moved us to Florida, and it's been over 11 years ago, the Lord, one of the, the things that he um, uh, was a, there was a little song that I sang right, right when we were leaving, and it was, I'll go with thee. Um, he let me know, personally, he let me know that he was going to be with me as we moved from North Carolina and came down to Florida and that I was going to be a pastor's wife for a whole new area, for a whole new congregation. And, and again, I, I didn't know anything about Florida. I'd only been down here a couple of times and I didn't know how to, you know, all those things kept, all those things came up all over again. And what had, to, what did I have to do again? I had to put up that shield of faith and say, Lord, I'm, I'm going. Uh, I'm not uh, confident that I know what I'm doing. I don't have any idea what we're gonna, what to expect when we get there. Um, I don't know what, what's going to happen to my children. I don't know where we're going to live. I don't know uh, what's going to happen to us. I have no clue. But um, through faith. We're coming. We're going. And, and the only reason that I felt confident to do that was because the Lord let me know, just like he was letting Gideon know. Look in verse number 16 again. And then the Lord said unto him, Surely I will be with thee. That's why I came to Florida. Because God said he would be with me. He said he would go with me. It doesn't matter where I'm at, what I'm doing, what the challenge is. Um, that he will be with me every step of the way and he's going to put people in my path. He's going to put people in your path that's going to encourage you, that's going to help you. Now, did it mean everything went smoothly? No, it didn't mean everything went so smoothly. Does it mean that I did everything right? No, I have made so many mistakes and I will continue to make so many mistakes. I have been a pastor's wife for um, 20 years now and I can tell you I still 
don't know how to be a pastor's wife. I still don't know what I'm doing. But what I do know is that God helps me every step of the way. Um, every situation that I come across, every new thing that I've never done before, he has somebody to help me, to guide me. Um, he, he shows me the way he's there with me. Um, his word speaks to volumes to me all the time um, and encourages me and helps me and grows me and corrects me when I need correction. Um, so just like with Gideon, uh, Gideon was in shock. You might be in shock of something that the Lord wants you to do uh, but when you are his, you have to remind the devil, you're he, you are God's. You are redeemed. You, um, if he has a path for you, don't be afraid to take that path. Now, that doesn't mean that this path isn't going to be scary, but it means that your confidence isn't in yourself. Gideon, if you look, I want you to, I want you to notice something. Go back uh, to verse number 14, and the Lord is, is looking upon Gideon. He's looking at him. Um, and he says, go in this thy might. What that, right, that little phrase right there is saying, he says, I want you to go in your strength. Um, I want you to go in your strength. What strength you have, I want you to offer it. And Gideon is like, but then this is when Gideon reminds the Lord, he says, but Lord, I'm the least of my father's house. He's saying, I'm the smallest. I'm the, the least worthy. I don't have strength. And he, he's asking the Lord, Lord, but what strength? Go in my might? I don't have any might. I don't have any strength to go in. I don't have any superpowers. I don't have any big giant, you know, muscles or anything like that. I can't go in my power. And the, the Lord is saying, that's the point. That's the point. Whenever I, you know, whenever I was, you know, telling the Lord, Lord, I don't know what I'm doing. He's like, that's the point. That's the point. You don't know what you're doing, but you go where I tell you to go and you do what I tell you to do and I will be training you and I will be helping you and I will be with you. In other words, who's going to get the, the glory when something, when, some, when something happens? Who got the glory whenever Gideon and his men uh, defeated the, 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 the enemy? Who gets the glory? God does. Gideon's men, there was 300 men, Gideon and his three and his men were 300 against 135,000. You can't tell me that that was because Gideon was such a mighty uh, person in battle. That You can't tell me that those 300 men had enough strength to defeat 135,000 uh, of the enemy. No, God moved in. God showed up. It was God's strength. It was God's might. It was God's power that caused fear over the enemy to the point where they fled. They fled. And whenever the Lord asks you to do something, whenever you're on that path, you're doing what the Lord has asked you to do, and you get fearful and you want to flee, when you get fearful and you want to, or you get tired and you want to put that shield down, those darts are going to be coming at you. You've got to put that shield up and go back to what God said. What did God say about the situation? Because your might isn't strong enough, but his might is. His might is. Now, I want you to, I want to close with this. I want you to go to Hebrews, back to your, your New Testament. Go all the way back to your New Testament. I want you to go to Hebrews, um, I believe it's chapter 11. Let me check. Yes, chapter number 11. Of Hebrews chapter 11. I want you to go down to verse number 32. We'll start at verse number 32. Hebrews chapter 11. Verse number 32. Mm. This is talking about those that, have, that were faithful. This is not talking about those that had personal might and power. This is talking about they were faithful and obedient and God's might and God's power was shown through their lives. Now, I want you to read with me. Follow along. I'm going to read 32 through 34. 32 of Hebrews chapter 11 says, And what shall I more say? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon and of, Bar and of Barak and of Samson and of Jephthah and uh, of David also, and Samuel, and of the prophets, who, talking about all these people, these people, this including Gideon, Gideon, through faith, subdued kingdoms, wrought the righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of fire. You hear that? Quenched the violence of fire. That's kind of like those 
quenching those fiery darts, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword. Out of weakness were made strong. Think about what Gideon described himself. Gideon saying, Lord, you're saying for me to go in my own might, but I'm telling you I don't have any. But he says here in verse number 34, out of weakness were made strong. They were made strong. They were made strong. You don't have to be already strong. If you're already strong, God's probably not going to use you. If you say, oh, I got this figured out. That's easy. I can do that. If I would have went to Laurel Hill um, as a new pastor's wife thinking I had everything figured out, um, I would have failed miserably. Um, and I'm not saying I did everything perfectly. I'm saying that the Lord, um, he, his strength and his power and his might was shown through my life. And even though I was weak and I was inadequate and I was and I still am not able to do um, what others want me to do. And uh, there's still lots and so many things that I'm still learning as a pastor's wife to do. I'm still learning and being trained. Um, we're um, through this, through all this COVID, I've been having to learn how to do a lot of technical things that I've never had to do before, but I've been forced to learn some things and to do some things that I had no clue how to do. And it takes me a long time sometimes to learn those things, and I'm always learning, but God is, is, is placing in his time, not always in my time, sometimes it, I have to wait on it, but he always places people in my path at just the right time and helps me along the way. Gideon was faithful and, and actually went forth to do what God told him that he was able to do, not because it was in Gideon's power and might, but because they were going to go in God's power and might, and that's how we all have to go through. If we all only do those things that we say, oh, I can handle that, let me sign up for that, then where's the faith in that? You have to do those things which, well, I don't know what I'm doing, but Lord, if this is what you want me to do, I'm willing to try, I'm willing to learn, I'm willing to, to pray and seek your face and wait on your guidance and to be patient and to learn and to not go into this situation thinking I have it all figured out. Um, that's how that Gideon was able to do these things as described, that Gideon and these other people that are described in chapter, or in verse number 32 of chapter 11, that they were able through faith, subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouth of the lions, quenched the violence of the fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, waxed valiant in fight, what happened in this last this last sentence, I don't want you to, to forget this because this is what happened in Gideon's um, circumstance. Turned to flight the armies of the aliens. Turned to flight. What does that mean? Turned to flight. They turned and ran. They turned and ran. The armies of the aliens. The armies of the aliens just means that it was the enemy. It was it was it was those that were not their people. It was the aliens, the, the enemy, that just means enemy, turned to flight. They turned and fled. The enemy fled, not realizing they were only up against 300 men. They were only up against 300 men. But because of the God's power and God's might, then this, this set of circumstances that God created made them think that they were so much more than 300 people there so many more and they turn and fled out of fear um and that's what the um that's what wearing our shield of faith can do for us that we can have the and it's not and we and i'm sure that gideon wasn't having a man that was such a great plan god gave him the plan god gave him the instructions gideon just followed through with the instructions that he was given that's all any of us are expected to do. just follow through with what god expects you to do with what he's asked you to do and above all, um, this leave you with this last little phrase, hold up your shield and press on. Hold up your shield and press on. Let's pray. I pray, Lord, that you just continue to help us. I pray, Lord, that when you ask me to do things, Lord, that I still don't know how to do, that I still um, don't feel comfortable with, Lord, that I will hold up my shield and I will go forward. I will press on through faith, out of act of obedience. I pray, Lord, that you just uh, guide and direct each and every one that might listen to this lesson today. I pray, Lord, you help them to do that very same thing. Lord, I love you and I praise you. In Jesus' name I do pray. Amen.